Right, recording has started. Hello again and welcome back to Scott Wonders World. Um, it's a fat, ugly one with my good friend. I get that right, Sally. I dug it right in there. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> and we, so we've just done um, a a joint review. We're going to go back and have a look at some old beers um, of uh, love and hate. Um, my can's in there. I can't be asked to get it. Still a nice beer. Hasn't changed a great deal from, I think we both agree. Yeah, it is. And then spurred on this second video to talk about buyouts, I guess, and yeah, buyouts, beer in general. Beer in general. Obviously, you've been doing this a lot longer than me. Um, I've been going for, though things have changed up slightly, it's probably more beer heavy than it's ever been <laughs> much to wonder. <laughs> um, so you've been going, what, six years, seven years? Um, I think it'll be eight years. Eight years in January. In, in, yeah, beginning of Jan, eight years in Jan, I think. So we're we're three and three and a bit in, um, and we obviously it, um, but when you're looking at old beers, obviously one of the the old beers that that we both agree at the time uh, was really good was Gamma Ray uh, from yeah. Beef Town, and the conversation sort of swept over to the fact that Heineken owned forty nine percent of um beaver town and largely to do with distribution i think to begin with more more of a, a logistics platform than anything yeah. but, um, but i guess that's their shoe in though isn't it yeah and now they've obviously been in and bought the the other 51 percent. so they're now lock stock and barrel owned by heineken yeah which is uh, a shame <laughs> It is, um, and, and I think that's where the, the, this conversation was in. Obviously, um, the world, as we know it, has gone a little bit to shit in the last, and is obviously people are going to start struggling as a business is um, very shortly. I know they've got the cap on rates, but that's just on the unit race, uh, rate that you, you, you use. That's not the, the amount. So if you use more, you're still going to pay more. You yeah. lose, le use less, you're still going to pay less. Um, and obviously, that's going to affect the brewing industry. Obviously, being beer nerds, beer reviewers, whatever you want to call us, and that's going to affect the beer industry, and as it's going to affect every industry, but it's going to affect it enormously. Yeah, so it's, it's a massive knock-on effect. And, um, I mean, we touched on about you, you, you... I mean, you mentioned it about potential buyouts up and coming. You know, yep. breweries sort of like bow into the checkbook almost. Um, I think it will happen. I think there will be other other craft breweries that that take the check. Yep. Um, which is, I don't know. It's it's all I can say is just be be very mindful, really, because you've got the likes of um, Marston's cutting the purse strings on Jennings. Yep. You know, a traditional old school brewery that's been going for donkey's years. Uh, swept under the the Marston's wing, and they've decided to cut the purse strings on that, and, and the brewery's no longer. Um, I suppose in the um, and if, if you have to, if, if we take our our love of beer away from it, and you look at it from a purely business point of view, I suppose the, some of these breweries are going to. I'm hoping to get Tim on actually uh, at some point from Fallen Acorn. I spoke to him at Warrior Fest. Not Warrior Fest, sorry, at their um, uh, Fallen Acorns th sixth birthday party. So I want him to come on and, and sort of tell people the um, the problems and that they face as a brewery now, and how they're going to grow even further next year because the price of malt is about to go skywards, um, which is going to affect every brewery, uh, big or small, on mm. their their ability to a make the beer, but also at a cost effective rate. Yeah, definitely, and that, and and that's the same. I suppose it's the same with hops. Yep. You know, everything, everything, every part of the the puzzle of creating the beer with the ingredients is going to either double or treble. And that, and, then, and, and, and then, then, down to the bloody water as well. I mean, that's gone up. You know, everything, everything that's in the can or in the bottle, there is massive. Uh, you know, increase that, that's and it's obviously it's got to be passed down. It's got to I mean, be. I say, and ultimately, we pay a price for that because to meet their costs or at least some of it, then they're going to have to pass some of that on to us. Now, we we both know that in the supermarket side of beer, uh, the margins that some of these supermarkets make 
are pennies, mm. pennies per can. Absolute pennies. I mean, we, we mentioned about this, um, yeah. you know, if, uh, created in 2017, 2018. Um, and it's it was three quid when it came out and it's still three quid. Yeah. Um, it's a 7.2%. So when you, when you factor in that sort of alcohol duty cost as well, which has been actually crammed into that three pound. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I try to think what the what the actual margins are on that. Which it's, is a really it's quite really scary. Good, it's a good point actually, because when obviously the whole point of that the the series that we're going to start we're going to do a little bit of is when you start not moaning but sort of questioning the quality of a beer that you've had four years ago. Yeah. Um, and then you think of that beer now. It's still the same price, but those ingredients aren't the same price anymore. No. So are we looking at, are we as a consumer looking at it the wrong way that we just want that beer from four years ago? Or should we accept that the world's moved on and the prices have moved on for, um, as you say, water? Water doesn't, there's not a free commodity. Uh, the barley, the hops, the yeast. All of those yeah, things have all added up. And, and everything. I mean, I mean yeah. everybody's wages have gone up. Yeah, and we're still <laughs> we've still got a beer for the same price. That I think we both agree. Certainly on this one, it's still okay. Yeah. I mean the the, the might there might be a few dodgy cans knocking about. Maybe it's just chance that we managed to get two relatively fresh top draw beers. Yep. But yeah, I think it's still it's still banging in 2022. I really do believe that it's um, it's a really good um, 7.2 AZ IPA. Now we, we we both know of beers that we've both gone back to, and we and we've messaged each other saying, "Have you tried this lately?" Yes. And it's like, yeah. What do you think of it? No, it's not the same beer. And then but the, but then you look at the those variable variable factors that goes into everything and are we being overly critical about it i don't know the answer to that to be fair because all i want is i want for my three pound four pound five pound whatever i'm paying for a bit one pound fifty i want my money's worth yeah, yeah. it's like with the the the, the 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 recent couple of years of releases from the supermarkets where we've noticed there's been a, an increase of 50 pence on certain Cans and, a and, a, and a pound every now and then. Every now and then you'll get yes, a four pound. Yeah, 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 a, a pound. Yeah, that, that, that four quid price point is is now sort of here to stay in some of the supermarkets. Um, I haven't got a problem with paying that as no. long as it lives up to it. Yeah. You know, yeah, if, okay. this, if this had gone up 50 pence right now after doing, you know, a joint review with, with your good self... I'd still be quite happy with it, to be honest with you, for that extra fifty pence. I, I, I wouldn't dis I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, and conversely, I've done some of the four pound beers that aren't as good as some of the three pound beers. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very it's a very fine line that you're you're walking on as as someone that's perhaps being dictated to with by the price, and then the consumer having to pay it. It's it's a very fine line. So here's a question. I've just thought of this. I'm thinking on the fly, Dean. Um, have you got a favourite brewery? Uh, I've got a few favourite breweries, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Pick, pick one that's not affiliated to a, a huge AB and Bev, Marston's, any of that lot. Okay. Um, uh, probably Verdant. <laughs> okay, Verdant. So Verdant is your... They, they say for for instance's sake, they're your they're your brewery. They're the beer uh, that you want to drink, right? And they're yeah. met they're met with a um, they're met with a problem, okay? And their problem is they have a choice. They either go out of business or they get swallowed by a big boy to keep making their their beer in some way shape or form okay as a consumer and they're your favorite brewery what would your you prefer 
or, or, uh, or, or not swallowed by a brewery. They get yeah, but, investment. Uh, a helping hand. A helping yeah. hand. Yeah. 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 Um, then I would probably, I would probably pin my thoughts on that buyout or partial buyout, as in something like Asahi buying Fuller's out. Okay, where so they... I'd like to think, in, in, you know, inside, I'd like to think that whoever bought Verdant out would say, right, okay, we're going to give you a cash injection. Everything's going to be tickety boo for the next sort of three or four years. The beers aren't going to change, as in with yeah. Fuller's. I'm sorry, they've, they've swallowed them up, but they said, just crack on and make it. Keep it as they, it is. They took on sort of brick, the bricks and mortar side, didn't they, a lot of it, with, with Asahi. They didn't get involved in the uh, took a great deal with the brewery. Is that correct? Um, or am I yeah, around it, the world? No, I think, I think it was the way that you said, mate. But all the same, it, you've still got that, that third eye looking down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's where, where, it, where can we save a pound here and a pound? Do you, do you know what I mean? That sort of mentality, you know, it's it's bloody box ticking and all that jazz. Well, when the bean counters get start getting involved, and as you say, uh, we, can, we can get this cheaper here, or we can do this here, and obviously we we've all got, let's say, like Verdant or or whoever really. That I, th when I mean, you there's, there's loads. There's absolutely loads. I mean, you you you're, you're, you're you know, you're staggering really good. Let, let's let's flip it around and, and, and throw it right back at you with staggering really good. You know, so, so that, you know. I think for me, um, I'm not I'm not somebody that pins pins everything on it on it being um, independent. Independent. Yeah. Right. Um, for me, as long as the beer is still of that quality. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not. I'm not one of these these craft beer drinkers that it's you know it's either yay or nay. I'm quite yeah. happy. I drink. I drink big, big, big beer. For fuck's sake, I've got I've got a bloody an Ibiza machine and an Inbev machine, and I drink bottled beers and canned beers from big breweries. I like macro beer. It's cheap. It's cheerful. Um, but I don't know. I, I sometimes get a little bit uncomfortable with these buyouts i don't know i don't know as long as they don't piss about with the beer that's what it all boils down to for me i i, I completely agree i do same as, as camden i still i still go back to camden hills every now and yeah. then i pick up a box of camden hills um obviously they're owned uh are they owned by now that's how they're by they're ab and bev aren't they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but they've ne that's never changed so as long as they don't piss around too much with the beer, I'm not going to throw all my toys out the pram. No, no. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've never been one to, you know, for God's sake, you know, the brewery can be bloody owned by McDonald's for all I care. As long as that beer resembles something yeah. Yeah. prior to being bought out. As long as, as, long as that's, all, that's all the consumer wants, really. I think as long as there is a... Um, That brewery still has its fundamental, um, it's, it's IP, its own property. So you like staggering good, it's, um, it's all about its dinosaurs and all that yeah. sort of stuff. As long as it kept its, all of that, and it still had that part of it, I don't think I'd have too much of an issue. Again, as long as that beer was still as the quality that but, it was. But didn't, didn't, uh, didn't Beaver Town have its own identity with that, them very, very loud back in the day, you know, loud can designs? They did, but their beer suffered. It, it's what was inside that takes the hit. It's never yeah, the brand. The brand is always perfect. Yeah. It never changes. It never no. alters. No. It's what's inside the can that always changes. And yeah. that's what pisses people off. Well, at the end of the day, you, we all gravitate towards either a brewery or beer or a commodity that we all, we all like, and as soon as someone fucks around with that, then we're all like, well, hang on a minute, it's like, it's like Punk IPA is the case in point to that. I mean, how many times have they buggered around with that beer? And it's now the bastard cousin of what it used to be. Yeah, 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 it's, um, I know I know we've touched on it before, where there's people out there that have never really tried the original 
Punk IPA, and that's a travesty to me, really. You know, we 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 were quite fortunate to, you know, we're old enough to know what it was like way way back. But there's there's that sort of vast majority of people that go into a whether it be a spoons or a brew dog pub and have a pint of punk, and it is what it is. Well, Five point two in a spoons for a start. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. I've had a couple of nice, uh, nice points of, of brewed on. Yeah, with, uh, I have. Spoons. And I've had some shocking ones. And some absolutely terrible ones as well. The fresher it is in spoons, it's it's, it's actually not a bad beer. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's decent. It's decent. If you can get it, a fresh pour, it's it's all right. Yeah. It's 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 weird, isn't it? I mean, I I'd never. Well, I set this channel up. I never really expected to get this far down the rabbit hole. I knew I liked the beer. Um, I didn't think I'd actually sort of get into a position where I'm friendly with brewery, certain breweries. I don't put myself out there. I don't. I don't want to be the biggest beer YouTuber in the world. I'm quite happy with the position we sit we sit in, as I know you are. Um, and you know, I I will always be someone that just appreciates a decent beer and not take it that seriously. Yeah, and and that, I think that's what it's all about. It, the beer, the beer should always be front and centre. Yeah. Whether you're yeah. doing this shit or not, you know, um, it, it should always be front and centre. It's a shame that sometimes it never works out like that. You know, you can get a fucking crap beer and it's you, you just can't help but naturally vent your frustration out on it. But then on the flip side, you can have an absolutely epic beer and really, <laughs> you know, shout from the rooftops about it. Here's one for you then. Uh, we'll run it for a couple of more minutes. Beer tube. Beer okay. tube. <laughs> okay, well, horrible word. Horrible word. Um, you've been doing it for almost eight years. How is it? How much has it changed for you in that time? How you Quite look on it. How, how you look on it. How you approach it. Um, your position within it. Bloody hell, mate! I've not had a lot to eat. <laughs> Um, I, I, I just worry you're about you. myself. I worry you're about you're myself you. now. Yeah. Um, I welcome that the, I mean, since the days of when I started, there was a lot of people doing it, and now there's even more people doing it. And I do welcome that. I think it's great that people feel confident to actually turn a camera on and just waffle. You know, yeah. I, 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 I doff my cap to that to all that because it does take a bit of getting used to just chatting a load of cobblers really mm -hmm. um and I'm, I'm all for loads of people wanting to do it there's also been a lot um, of people come and a lot of people go as well definitely, yeah they, yeah they, yeah, they, they, yeah they think yeah. it's an easy thing to do and it is easy but it, it's also a case of what do you want from it i've never taken it that seriously you know that i come in i i've made my friends i'm quite happy with where i sit within a community if you like yeah. Um, yeah. but, but I've always yeah. said we, we're not the community it's the people that watch these things they're the real community so the people that watch us and whoever they else they want to watch that's the community we, we just facilitate that yeah. Yeah. that community build yeah yeah it's um, it, it, I mean I'll always see it as a hobby a, a fun yeah. hobby yeah I'll always see it like that you know I, I don't think you should take it too serious I think it's ridiculous that people get too heavily invested in it. I think that's just you know, flogging a dead horse. We've both got full-time jobs in, out in the real world. That, that's yeah. what it's all about. This is... Proper problem. Uh, for me, originally, it was a, a bit of an escape, escape yeah. route. Yeah, proper problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> problem. Proper problem, not this. This isn't... This yeah, isn't. I mean, yeah, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. So, so, when you, so when you started, obviously, when you started, there was none of the the supermarket sort of drops and all that. So it's literally just reviewing beer that you wanted and had to go out and actually find. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, whether it had been going to a bottle shop, offy. Offy. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to be very... Or ordering yeah. online. Ordering yeah. online. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's always been something that I've quite been... I've been quite happy to put, you know, sit down at my own leisure, look on my laptop and just order a few beers... Boom, done, delivered the next couple of days or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do welcome the supermarket releases. I've always been a fan of it. I think it's great. It's beer for everybody. 
Yeah. Affordable yeah. beer. Yeah. To yeah. Make, yeah. Obviously, you, uh, we, we've had this conversation as well when you've got the, um, the Luddites come into Tesco's and all they look is the 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 Heineken and the the Fosters and if they just you just shimmy them around 180 degrees and they got this whole not so much in Tesco's now they got this whole world that opens up in front of them and if they do were to just take a chance on yeah play about uh, play about yeah, I, I've always been I've always been curious to try something else nice. yeah even before I started YouTube I was one of these guys I go you know, if we went abroad on holiday for a couple of weeks somewhere, I'd be intrigued to see what the local beer was. Yeah. You know, I wasn't quite happy with the same old, same old, you know. Yeah. The constant sort of uh, pint of Smith's or pint of Foster's, you know. I had enough of all that. I wanted to try something different. Yeah. And this just this is just a little bit more of a project, projection to be able to do that. So that it sort of facilitates what you wanted to do. And obviously... Right. Justifies it, doesn't it? In, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, a, in a silly sort of way, it justifies me making a stupid purchase on a can of beer or a bottle of beer. Yeah, you know? might make you ten, might make you ten p back on it if you're lucky. Well, that's it. Yeah, you always run at a loss, but but you can't. Again, that that's a completely different. That you know, don't think you shouldn't come into well, this thinking there, there, you're going to start paying your bills with it because that's just there's you know, this fallacy, isn't there, that every YouTube monetized YouTube channel. A millionaires and uh if only if, uh, do you know what i dream some days i'll make my money back on the beer you know it doesn't happen very often yeah if i can get if, if i can cross the line at the end of the month and cash out i always put it back onto beer always yeah it never goes to anything else i always yeah, I, I put I'll, I'll buy a case of beer from somebody you know go online and order some beer and I, and, and, that, and that's how it works so it, it it pays for them few reviews that I do. Yeah, um, I, was I, can, I can live with that. Our runs at a loss every month without fail. It's um crazy, <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. It wonder doesn't enjoy yeah, well, it. Yeah, well that's it. Yeah, that's it. You you still got you still got fire in your belly. Well, that, you know, do that's, why, that's why I change things up every now and then because I I know I get bored. Um, so if I'm bored then everyone else is going to be bored as well. So I, I mean, I've got that Oktoberfest thing coming out uh, uh, later on today. That's today, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I've just, you know what? I've just had fun with it. I've just had a bit of fun with it. They're both, I mean, this will, fuck off. This will come you know, out. You, that's what I like about you and Wanda. You, you, don't, you don't take yourself seriously. You're going for a laugh. You'll dabble yeah. with anything. It's a bit of well, fun. Well, I sat there in the hat, my braces, and just... <laughs> Just sat and, took them. and do you know what? Are they the best beers in the world? No, they're not. I've I've I've, I've not had too many. Well, that's the only Dunkel I've ever. I, I don't even know if it's a fucking proper Dunkel. So I'm, I, all I can do is sit there and say, do you know what? For the price, <laughs> for the price, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, you know. I'm, and I just I sat there and I just said, do you know what? There are better beers in the world, but there's also there's a lot fucking worse, and there's a bit of fun. I did yeah. the review with a bit of fun. Yeah, and that, and I think that that's how you, that that's how you've got that's the direction you've got to go down with it. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you, I, make, I, you make it you make it shits and giggles, don't you? Never I've, ever take it too fucking serious. Well, we know I've, there's a few people out there that do, and I yeah. I just don't think that's healthy myself. Well, I've torn into certain beers in Aldi, uh, twice as shite. That was terrible. Um, and, and other bits and pieces and stuff from home bargains. But I went into that that, that review yesterday with the, with the sole purpose of just having a bit of fun with it. And I've I've drunk them both. Uh, you know yeah. that's that says enough for me. Yeah, it it is what it is, mate. You can lose yourself in YouTube in a rabbit hole of misery, or and I'm not like that. You know I'm not like that. And I just yeah. I, I like to have fun. You, I mean, there are people out there that do pin their colours to a certain mast, and that's fine. Of course, so you is. know where you stand with them. Yeah, we're all I, different. I, I, I'd like to think that I'm I'm one of these guys that that flip flops in and out of the craft and the macro, the craft and the macro, because I respect I respect both really. To be honest, yeah. I'm not I haven't got one allegiance to one or the other. You know, yeah, there's, room. It, there's room for everything. There's room for everybody, and there's yeah, room for everything. There is. And you've got to think about the pocket as well, haven't you? Yeah, you know. Big beer would be deemed as evil and horrible and tasteless. 
But I have, I had, it's I had, a I had, I had this conversation with, with a couple of guys I work with on Friday about this because one of the guys, Adrian, he, I'm just getting him in to sort of craft beer. Um, and Dan works at a craft beer tap room um, over in Totten. So he's got a, an understanding of how it works. But I've said to you, I, I, I've got a feeling um, through the winter and probably into next year, and I, I hate to say this, but I think the, the, the sales of craft beer is going to plummet and people will go back to macro stuff simply for price. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's where they've got, they, they've got the ball in their court because they're, they're, you know, three, four, five, six, seven times bigger than these little guys. They've got more, they've got more room on the chessboard. They can yep. play about with figures. They can take the hit a hell yep. of a lot more than, you know, the little macro brewery down, micro brewery down the court, down the road. And I think they know that. They've always known that. I think they they, they feared craft beer as as a threat, hence moving in with the checkbook. You know, put yeah. a load of noughts on the end, you know, we'll 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 hypnotize you with that. You yeah. know, let's have a piece of the pie sort of thing. I mean we we've had the discussion that my days of reviewing seven, eight, nine pound cans of beer, they're probably done. Yeah. For, for the time being, so I'm going to buy stuff I can afford. Um, I also, I, would, I also, I think it's really important. I, I, I stressed this on the the two staggering good beers I did the other day. You've got to support your local brewery, whoever they are, and you want to keep them. You got to go out and buy a beer from them. If it's four pound, three pound, five pound, at least or one, just one of them, because you're going to lose them. If we don't support these breweries, they're going to go. They, they will go, and, and I think that 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 sums that sums it up as as a whole for for all industries really. You know, if you can buy local, yep, with everything really, yep, it's best it's best to keep keep the money in that town, whether it's a, a bakery, a craft brewery. I mean, let's come on for, for someone that reviews his. Um, this you're sat on the fucking Brew Dog Fellowship Parallel Box. So I will always review Brewdog stuff, and I'll, I'll review it because there's a, there's an interest in it. Yeah. Um, there's for the rights and wrongs of Brewdog, they've got a massive clear, um, they've got a massive uh, workforce. You don't buy their, their beers, people are going to lose their jobs as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, and, the empire that the empire that they've created, whether you like it or you don't like it, it's created a hell of a lot of bloody jobs. Whether yeah. it's in the factories. Yep. In the warehouses, in the bars, uh, it's there's a, a hell of a lot of people that have um, they rely on that. And yeah, they rely yeah. on that as, as as their income. So we, we can all have our political um, thoughts on brood. I've got my own, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll and I, one day that one of them might pay for itself. <laughs> 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 but but yeah. you, you can walk away from that situation, though, mate, knowing that you can you can hold your head up high because you know that you do support local as well. I would uh, the, the, when they were, were, I mean, Dave from Southsea Brewing hasn't released anything new for a little while, which is why you haven't seen him. Fallen Acorn, I struggled to get to because they're over in um, their Gosport. But then we went to their birthday party and supported them. Staggeringly good. I get on well with the guys there, so I'll pick their stuff up as and when. And I, I tried my best to blow the trumpet for yeah. the, the, the stuff that we've got around here. And we are very lucky. Yeah, you, 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 I mean, you can't please everybody. Someone, somebody's going to slip through the net, but you do your best, don't you? You do your bit, and you know, yeah. you, you know, yeah. Like you and say, you, a... you know, you're you're guilty of buying punk IPA. Yep. But on the on the flip side of that, you purchase staggering really good beers. So there's, there's only so many pennies in the pocket. That's it. That's it. You got you just got to be a little bit more savvy, haven't you? I suppose each. Each week or month is different to everybody. You know, they, sometimes they're flush one week or one month. Other times you're not. Well, we, we nipped up to Staggering Good last night. I had a pint of their um, their beer basol, their, um, their new Hellas Lager. Very Hellas. nice. Yeah, very nice beer. Um, I come. like all that. See, I, I, like, I like these little craft brews having a go at an iconic style. And it I takes like a lot of bloody time as well. The, the, invested in something like a lager or a pilsner, Hellas, 
yep. is a hell of a lot of time and space that's occupied with that, where they could be doing something else and knocking knocking something else out twice as quick. Well, I spoke to Joe um, uh, last week before it came out. I had a quick taster at the brewery, and he was very nervous. It's the, the first um, lager they've ever brewed, so I'm led to believe. Uh, but I, I, I liked it. I think I'm not a, a huge lager drinker these days, even craft lager. But I like it. I think it's a nice beer. Yeah, I'll always, and, I'll always champion and, that and, style. And, and as you say, um, fair play to them for doing something. I mean, they're known for their where they go on sour root and sort of hazy IPA root. They got that stop, drop, and roll. The West Coast IPA. So they always be sort of quite IPA heavy. For them to do something completely different, fair play. Yeah. And it, it sets them apart from the guys that are just quite content with knocking out IPA or pale ale. Yeah. Stout, it, stout now and again. And then going back I mean, to IPA and pale ale. And it, as you it, say... It, what I'd say, a good all-round brewery, they can dabble you, with all yeah. the styles and come up trumps. And as you say, they, uh, for a, a brewery to actually make a Heller's Lager properly or any lager properly, and have it because obviously it takes time to brew, so they're taking up their tanks to do that. Yeah. Um, you're looking at six weeks okay. plus. Yep. You know, whereas you're knocking out IPAs and stuff, you can do that in half the time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and then, you you, you know, you, you fair, fair play to them for doing it, because it is a gamble, but hopefully it'll pay off and people will, will like what they're doing and they can maybe do it again. Absolutely. Right, mate, we've been going for over a half an hour. I think we'll cut it off here. Um, yep. Always a pleasure to chat to you, my friend. Nice shooting the breeze with you, mate. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be. We can do some more of these these um, old uh, beers that we can go back and try. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, listen. definitely. We can we can you chip away at a few. Yeah. So um, go and give Dean a sub if you aren't already. Yeah, fucking thing. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you soon. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you.